This AGC course will provide an overview on how generation in a large high-voltage system is automatically controlled. Included in this a description of the different modes of control and the parameters of the control settings, also the instructions and detail required for the generation dispatcher to become proficient in the operation of the automatic generation control AGC. AGC is a computerized system located in the control centers on the generation dispatcher's desk. This program will automatically balance generation and load providing it is used within defined limits. The AGC will also automatically respond to system conditions and schedule changes with little manual input. The electrical system should be in a normal state for the AGC to function properly. The generation dispatcher is required to monitor the power system and have enough generation on bar to avoid a problem. AGC must only operate in automatic mode or on if the power system is stable and has AGC generation available and synchronized to the system. Let us discuss first AGC definitions. The following AGC definitions are located on the Energy Management System EMS Unit Control Pages. AGC Unit it is, is a generator to which AGC can transmit a set point or raise, lower pulses, unit control. Mode, it determines how the unit is to be treated by AGC. The possible modes are, local unit under local control, no set point is transmitted, fixed base loaded unit, fixed unit set point. Ramping unit, is ramped to a new set point. Regulating B, regulating unit manually entered base point, fixed R, regulating unit with manual base point, base point, it is the desired unit base load. Set point, it is the desired generation output of a unit. Regulating mode, it indicates that AGC regulator is active. Before entering regulating mode, the generation dispatcher must check that there are no tripping conditions prevailing and that the regulating margin spinning reserve are sufficient. Regulation pause, it indicates that regulating mode is temporarily inhibited. The regulation will be resumed automatically if conditions improve before the timeout, otherwise it will suspend. Regulation suspend, it indicates that regulating mode is permanently inhibited. To start it again, AGC must be reactivated by the generation dispatcher. Response rate, it is calculated as the sum of the maximum ramp rates for all units in the regulating mode. Regulating margin up, it is the maximum possible increase in generation for all regulating units with the currently used maximum limits. Regulating margin down, it is the maximum possible decrease in generation for all regulating units with the currently used minimum li limits. Frequency deviation, it is the difference between the scheduled frequency and the measured system frequency. Interchange deviation, it is the difference between the scheduled active power interchange and the measured interchange with all interconnected operating areas calculated from the measured power flow through the individual tie lines. Generation under AGC, it is the sum of the generation from all AGC units. Emergency mode, it indicates that the system is in abnormal state. This mode is entered and left automatically and allows the AGC to regulate with higher ramp rates and wider production limits than in normal mode. Emergency mode must not be used for long durations. Area control error ACE, the ACE shows the current mismatch between the active power generation and load. It is calculated from the frequency deviation and the active power interchange deviation depending upon the area control mode. Time correction action, it indicates that the time correction component is included in the ACE calculation. The time correction is calculated from a frequency offset or from a time error measured by the time base unit. Time correction mode, there is two possible modes which are mutually executed, manual, a manual entered frequency offset is used, auto, the time error from the time base unit is used. Frequency offset, it is a manually entered deviation from the nominal frequency. It is used to correct the time defined by the system frequency. ACE, AGC impact, the ACE is considered a measure in MW of the balance of generation to system load while factoring in the tie line schedules. The generation dispatcher can determine the stability of the power system by observing the ACE. As the ACE becomes larger the AGC output changes to include more costly units that have been selected for AGC control. The unit loading changes according to the control output issued by AGC to correct the ACE error. The outputs from AGC to the units can be in the form of set point newer controls or in raise lower pulses older controls. The amount of change is dependent on the size of ACE. ACE will be discussed in greater detail further on in the coming slides. AGC operating functions, if the ACE moves outside a predetermined limit, 
the AGC will suspend and go to monitor mode and no longer send control outputs to the AGC generators. The generation dispatcher must then control the system manually by contacting power plants to adjust the generation within control limits. Power plant generation dispatcher interaction, the power plant operator must have units available for AGC control. The power plant operator will place the units available for AGC on remote control by a control switch located in the power plant control room. Each AGC unit will have a control switch which can be selected for local or remote control. When the units are on remote control, the generation dispatcher will place the generators on AGC control by the software in the AGC computer system. The AGC will load the units within limits determined in the AGC settings and by the generator control limits. AGC Unit Response AGC works most effectively if many units from different generating stations are selected for AGC control. This will allow the AGC system to be very fast in changing to the power system needs as determined by the ACE. The amount of change is dependent on the size of ACE. With a low ACE deviation, no action will take place. As the ACE increases, different modes of operation occur as follows, normal AGC response, once outside the dead band, normal regulation will send out raise or lower values equal to 90% of the value of ACE. Assist AGC response, if the ACE is large, then AGC will switch to assist and 105% of the value of ACE is requested. Emergency AGC response, if ACE is very high, the AGC will switch to emergency and 120% of the ACE value is sent the AGC units. All units selected to AGC will respond in the emergency mode. Common AGC operation, having many generating stations respond to ACE or load changes could also benefit the transmission system by not moving all generation changes from one location and possibly causing a transmission system overload. overload. If the ACE is allowed to go outside the setting limits, for automatic control, the AGC system will suspend and no control signals will be sent to the AGC units. The generation dispatcher will only be able to monitor the system with no automatic actions occurring. Manual actions by the generation dispatcher will be required. The problem must be corrected manually by the generation dispatcher by manually adjusting generation or changing schedules. This will bring the ACE within the limits for automatic control. The generation dispatcher must not under any circumstances individually adjust schedules to bring AGC within control settings for automatic use. This action could have a negative impact on the power system. Other problems which could cause AGC to suspend may be tie line telemetering giving bad data by failed communication, testing, or commissioning new points. All of these should be considered before AGC is put back into the on or automatic operation. The generation dispatcher must have sufficient units on AGC to provide load following reserves in addition to contingency reserves. This is required to be able to send control set points up or down to satisfy ACE regulation control expected in the next percent hour. AGC control parameters, ACE is a calculation performed by the AGC computer system that indicates the balance between generation and load in the RCC. ACE is calculated using inputs from the power system and computer system. Tie line bias TLB, the most commonly used ACE calculation parameter mode is called tie line bias. This is the AGC mode that should be operating in in most circumstances. In TLB mode the ACE is calculated using the system frequency and tie line loading. Constant net interchange CNIC, another AGC mode of operation available to the generation dispatcher is constant net interchange. In this mode of operation the frequency component of the ACE calculation is removed. The AGC will control to, to the tie line schedules and the AGC will pulse the generation to ensure these flows are maintained. This could have a negative effect on system frequency as the AGC does not factor in the frequency and adjust for it as in TLB mode. Switching AGC to constant net interchange control would only be done if all frequency signals were lost. As shown in the following ACE calculation equation for CNIC, ACE equals MW flow minus MW target. Constant frequency control CFC, a third AGC mode of operation available to the generation dispatcher is constant frequency control. In this mode of operation the interchange or flow component of the ACE calculation is removed. The AGC will only respond to frequency change to satisfy the frequency target. 
AGC will pulse the generation to ensure frequency is maintained. The only time CFC should be used is if the operating area is isolated and operating as an island. Caution must be taken to ensure the bias setting is adjusted properly for isolated operation or frequency can deviate considerably. ACE flow diagrams for disturbance conditions, the following are diagrams that illustrate the ACE calculations. The next figure shows graphically how ACE is calculated. As the box states, if the frequency in the interconnection is low and the actual net interchange for an operating area is higher than scheduled, the two terms, terms in the equation will tend to cancel each other out. This will indicate a disturbance took place in another operating area. Any attempts to lower the generation in this operating area, to correct the net interchange deviation will have a negative impact on the system frequency problem in the main grid. ACE flow diagrams for disturbance conditions, if a generating unit trips anywhere in an interconnected system, the frequency decays. All the generating unit governors respond immediately by increasing their output to stabilize frequency. Following this, the AGC system in the operating area where the unit trip occurred takes over to increase the output of the remaining generators and restores the system frequency. In the line bias control, the AGC signal is based on the value of ACE. The response depends on what operating area the generating unit tripped. ACE flow diagrams for disturbance conditions, when the unit trip first occurs, power will flow into the operating area to make up for the loss in generation, leading to a temporary increase in inadvertent interchange. As the AGC action takes effect the flow on the ties will back off until the scheduled and actual flows are again in balance. If the generating unit trips in another operating area, the two terms of the equation should exactly balance. Although the governors in the stable operating area will respond to the frequency deviation, the AGC system will not respond, since the ACE value should net to zero as shown in figure. ACE flow diagrams, for disturbance conditions, when a tie line is removed from service, the generation dispatcher must remove that line from the AGC calculations and manually enter a zero flow. When telemetry is lost on any tie line, it is a good practice for the generation dispatcher to manually enter a value equal to the flow on the line. This value should be updated at least every 10 minutes and should be done as soon as possible after a system change. AGC operating characteristics, AGC pause condition AGC has the capability to pause in order to allow the power system to recover from temporary events. If these events last too long, a go will simply transfer from pause to suspend mode. The following functions will cause AGC to pause, loss of all frequency sources failure of telemetry of any of the tie lines ACE is more than a preset value determined by engineering studies. AGC operating characteristics, AGC suspend condition, AGC will suspend due to excessive system frequency deviation. AGC pause exceeding specified time period. If AGC is suspended, it will not automatically resume. The generation dispatcher must determine the cause for the suspended AGC and take a coordinated corrective action. Returning AGC to normal, to return AGC to automatic, the generation dispatcher will have to manually adjust generation and contact the reliability coordinator. The RC can also coordinate the adjustment of tie line schedules as required to allow AGC to return to normal operation under tie line bias control. Once AGC has been restored, schedules or generation may be adjusted to meet the system needs. AGC operating characteristics, AGC monitor, AGC can be switched to monitor mode where ACE is calculated without sending raise lower or new set points to the units. This mode is used to monitor the impact while manually adjusting generation or load to return ACE within parameters where it will not immediately suspend or pause. It is similar to a manual action to, to suspend AGC when no control action is desired. The generation dispatcher can then monitor the ACE. Once generation has been adjusted and the monitored ACE is within acceptable limits, then the generation dispatcher can return to tie line bias control. Frequency bias factor B, it is important for the generation dispatcher to know where this setting is changed in the AGC system. If an operating area were to become isolated, for a long period of time, the response effect of frequency bias would change. This is due to a smaller system that the AGC is now trying to control. Having the frequency bias number set as the normal interconnected value will tend to cause larger frequency swings in the isolated operating area. 
The frequency bias setting should be reduced or set to zero to allow AGC to control more accurately while in an isolated state. Once the interconnection is re-established the bias setting should be returned to its previous value. Time error correction, interconnection frequency is normally scheduled to present value and controlled to that value. The control is imperfect and over time the frequency will average slightly above below that value. This results in mechanical electric clocks getting their power from the grid developing an error relative to true time. The EMS system allows for a coordinated time correction by setting up a frequency offset. The set point of all interconnected operating areas must be changed to a value which will correct the accumulated time error. Normally the time error is allowed to collect to a predetermined error value. A coordinated time error correction is started by setting in a new system frequency set point. The accumulated time difference is calculated between time based on interconnection frequency and a universal standard of extremely accurate time. Control Performance Standard CPS, these definitions are a North American standard that in simple terms shows how well the operating area performs in correcting frequency. It can be called ACE over frequency. The standard looks at how well the operating area contributes to the correction of frequency based on the size of the operating area compared to the whole interconnection. CPS defines a standard of minimum control performance. Each operating area is to have the best operation above this minimum standard that can be achieved, while considering reasonable economic and physical limitations. Each operating area shall monitor its performance on a continuous basis against two standards in CPS-1 and CPS-2. Automatic Generation Control AGC is primarily responsible for ensuring the smooth and efficient operation of an electric power system. The main goal of AGC is to keep the operating frequency under prescribed limits and maintain the interchange power at the intended level. Therefore, an AGC system must be supplemented with modern and intelligent control techniques to provide adequate power supply. AGC is an integral part of the electric power system that ensures sufficient, effective, and consistent power delivery. In a deregulated power system, its importance increases as it plays a major role in power sharing and improving energy market conditions. The key goals of AGC are to regulate the system frequency and tie line power, while continuously monitoring the load demands and the existence of various uncertainties, system nonlinearities, and indifferent multivariable power system conditions which make it a multi-objective optimization problem.